Good. Good morning, Leavenworth citizens. Welcome to the mayor's Facebook Live Town Hall number 10. Been doing this for two and a half months. Um, but I'd like to welcome you again. Hope you're having a good week. Um, as always, uh, the city manager, Mr. Paul Kramer, is here with me uh, to share information with respect to the city uh, over the next hour or so. And I have a guest subject matter expert today, and I'm pleased to introduce Command Sergeant Major Antoine T. Jones, the Garrison Command Sergeant Major at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Command Sergeant Major Jones will provide an update uh, on the effects of COVID-19 and what's going on uh, at Fort Leavenworth. And if you have questions for Command Sergeant Major Jones, please submit them at any time during our uh, town hall. And uh, if there are no questions from the audience, I may have a few questions for him. So please submit your questions. I'm really happy that uh, he's been able to take some time out of his busy schedule to be with us today. So Command Sergeant Major Jones, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Go hey. ahead. Oh, do you want me to start now? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I sir. know the big thing on everyone's uh, mind is, is the Memorial Day celebration or Memorial Day ceremony. Uh, this year is going to happen a, a little bit different. It will be a private ceremony, and we are going to block it off so that the public cannot attend. Uh, our patrons that, that usually would like to visit Memorial Day and, and, and do something, that will be open for our authorized patrons on Saturday and Sunday. But during the time that we have the ceremony, it will be a blocked off event, and we will uh, not allow visitors at that time. Uh, <clears throat> The, the fort, we, we're, we're doing very, very well uh, concerning the COVID-19 uh, epidemic. And we are, are in the middle of opening and, and re-establishing some services that, that the, the commanding general has, has vetted. And we're trying to be in concert with the Ad Astra plan. Uh, there will be select services that will be opening as the situation dictates. And uh, as we get those, you need probably stay tuned to the Facebook uh, live town hall tonight, and uh, Colonel Hung will have some more definitive answers and dates and times for whenever any of these services are open. We are we are proud of the community of the Fort Leavenworth and and Leavenworth uh, communities. We we really do appreciate the the symbiotic relationship as as the. The Leavenworth community has been very helpful in our ability to kill the virus, and, and they have provided a great deal of support. So we really do appreciate the, the community of Leavenworth because you are also part of the hometown mentality. So this, this is very much appreciated from everyone here at Fort Leavenworth to the citizens of Leavenworth proper. Uh, as we as we move forward, uh, there will be phases that we will try to uh, schedule and re and rephase in. But we also know that the virus has a vote, and we everything will be determined as the situation dictates. So as long as we're doing our part, and everyone around us is doing our part to make sure that we are stopping the spread and the transmission of the virus, we will probably continue on our current reopening plan. But as I said before, uh, the virus does dictate the action. So uh, anything that we say or, or do will be taken, and it will be a data-driven decision that will allow us to either open up safely and uh, effectively and efficiently and while maintaining our wartime mission. Our, the, the safety of our citizens, both on and off installation, is paramount in every decision that we make, and we really do appreciate uh, everything that's been going on. Sir, it, it, unless you have any other questions, I, I will turn the mic back over to you. Were there any questions? Uh, we have one uh, submitted about uh, any word on the 4th of July ceremony at this point. The 4th of July ceremony? That We have not uh, made a, a decision uh, point on that yet. Uh, we have not looked that far. Well, we've looked that far, but we haven't locked in any type of decisions on how the July 4th cel uh, celebration will happen or if it will happen at all. And... There, there, there are a lot of plans to where we can either maintain, do a, a, a portion of it, or move the celebration back. So, but we just don't know right now. It's just too far in the future to predict the, the, the environment that we're going to be in at that time. 
I know that it's been the policy. Could you just review very briefly for uh, military retirees, people, active duty military, people who come on Fort Leavenworth for the commissary and the PX and the um, Munson Army Health Center, could you just explain the rules as far as uh, basically masks have to be worn yes. at certain locations? So, so far, <clears throat> until the foreseeable future, until rescinded by the commanding general, uh, facial coverings will have to be be worn in all locations, all public locations, such as Commissary PX, uh, Munson, and Shopette. And, and if we have any other services like the, the post office on, okay. on, on Fort Leavenworth or any other places where there can be mass gatherings of more than 10 people to, to do a retail type of business, sure. uh, facial coverings will be have to be worn and we will also limit to the occupancy rates as we, as we discussed. And I know, Colonel Hung, and you have a uh, Facebook Live town hall. Is it uh, three days a week? Yes, sir. We have a, a Facebook town hall three days a week. It's 1730 or 530 for, for people <laughs> who, who have forgotten what military time <laughs> is. Uh, and we, we, we do go over uh, go over the daily happenings of what's happening on Fort Leavenworth. I don't want you to get into a lot of specifics, but can you... Um, there is going to be a CGSC class coming in, from what I understand. but um, And it's probably going to be delayed a little bit, but... In terms of just what's going on at the garrison level as far as um, like synchronization of moves and everything, like I said, I don't need you to get real specific, but could you mm -hmm. just give our citizens kind of an idea of what's going to be happening over the next two or three months? Roger. So so with our CGSC class and, and all of our classes that we have in our PMEs, as when the Secretary of the Army has dictated that they will be turned on, we will be ready to execute the, the transition out of the current CGSC class and, and the incoming class as directed by the uh, HQDA Secretary of the Army. We, we are in lockstep and we have, have had many planning cycles to ensure that we do not lose anyone in the fray of COVID-19. COVID-19 will not be responsible for someone getting out of here or coming in here. Uh, on a different level, the, the 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 decisions that are made will be based upon the safety and security uh, of the family members. Uh, uh, but we are ready to assist and prepare for the the outgoing class and the incoming class. And uh, the determination of who, what, when, where, why that is still echelons above Fort Leavenworth <laughs> right now. And uh, when that information is, but we are not. Uh, Quarters of information. Once the information does come out, we will publicly put it out once the CG is blessed off on it. Good, good. Um, I know a little bit about the schools, the public schools on post, and uh, we have a great, uh, the Garrison and the Fort mm -hmm. Leavenworth Public School District have a great relationship, and I know, I think it was last Friday, they they had a vehicle parade, I think, that was uh, kind of organized by the commanding general's uh, spouse, Mrs. Rainey, which I heard was Pretty nice to mm. kind of uh, acknowledge and celebrate the kindergartners moving on to first grade, the freshmen at Patton moving on to high school, and then mm. the high school students uh, at Leavenworth High School who are actually, you know, live on post. Did you have a chance to attend that? Oh, yeah. So I, I was very knee-deep in the planning of that. <laughs> and, and just uh, uh, FYI, it was Leavenworth Lansing Platt seniors. Okay. okay. Uh, so – Okay. Uh, Yes, yeah, so, yeah. uh, I mean, there's nothing better to, than to be ab have the opportunity to celebrate our children. They are our future, mm -hmm. and and they have shown such resi resiliency and adaptability mm -hmm. during this time that that we, as a generation, probably decades and generations, have not had to experience since right. the Spanish flu. And so, with this environment, and they've they've shown some resilience. We, we did, thought that it would be best yeah. to help, you know, just show some support sure. to the, to the kids, and. Uh, it was it was excessive. It was about 175 vehicles that went through the, throughout the post, and kids got the wave. And do you you can tell the it was worth it because you seen the, the smile on the kids' faces. And they went. I think that one of the final stops was to drive by the commanding general's uh, quarters. Correct? Right. It was. It was. <laughs> and, and they got to listen to music and uh, see the balloons, the uh, drive under the flag, and. The, it, it was it was a pretty good event for the kids. All the kids that I've talked to right. that I know, they really enjoyed it. And it was just something to give them some recognition on, on their sure. accomplishment. It's in because normally the kindergartners and and uh, freshmen. freshmen and the seniors they have a graduation ceremony, yeah. and we just want to do something not in lieu of, but yeah. in addition to. 
And I think uh, the city of Leavenworth and the Leavenworth School District is going to do the similar thing for the seniors, the mm -hmm. class of 2020 at Leavenworth High School. I believe it's this upcoming uh, Saturday, the 23rd of May. So we're looking forward to that within the community. But this was kind of a, probably on a little bit smaller scale, but it, I know it was very, very nice. Right. And the community was able to express their thanks and appreciation for the, for the, for the children, for the students, and their parents. The parents um, and teachers. And teachers, that's, yes. that is correct. Because I, I think teachers have become so much, they've always been important, but their right. recognition has, has grown exponentially in the, in the yeah. COVID crisis because now we understand the, the, the circumstances that the teachers do have to go through and everything that they are. They're a vital, vital uh, part of our society. So it was also to include the teachers, to have, the, have them have a chance to cel yes. be celebrated also. And we did have a, a, a graduation for the Patton Junior High School freshmen. It was one of, you know, first of its kind in terms of a virtual, but not mm -hmm. the same as bringing all the students together in Lewis and Clark uh, uh, auditorium, but still it went well. I know the commanding general had was the guest speaker and had some great remarks and comments for the freshmen mm -hmm. of Patton Junior High School. So we were able to do that last Thursday. Um, any other questions, Mr. Kramer? Not at this time. Um, well, just give my best to uh, Colonel Hung. Okay. Thank you, Command Sergeant Major Jones, and to uh, all the leadership there uh, on Fort Leavenworth. And uh, we'll continue to uh, stay synchronized as we move forward and fight the spread of the COVID-19 virus. And uh, every day brings, seems like it brings something new. So I know we're adaptable. Mm -hmm. You know, we remain adaptive and resilient. And I appreciate you coming by today to share, um, you know, generally what's going on at Fort Leavenworth. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you for having us. Okay, we really you. appreciate it. Right. Thanks. I'm going to uh, get right to it uh, in terms of the current status of the uh, order, the Ad Astra, Governor Kelly's Ad Astra, a plan to reopen Kansas order. Late yesterday afternoon, the governor announced that the state will transition to phase two of the plan on Friday, this Friday, May 22nd. And uh, during phase two, uh, these are the bullets uh, that kind of summarize what will happen during phase two. Mass gatherings of up to 15 will be allowed. Bars, nightclubs, and swimming pools will stay closed. State-owned casinos may open if they comply with health guidelines. Theaters, arcades, trampoline parks, museums, bowling alleys may open. Organized sports and practices are allowed. The new activities and businesses that are allowed must comply with social distancing guidelines. And let me just, uh, on that, there's, it's about a seven or eight page order. I'm not going to obviously read the whole order, but I do want to highlight a few things. And this is executive order, uh, Governor Kelly's executive order 20-34. And this new executive order uh, supersedes the uh, executive order 2031, which was for Ad Astra phase 1.5. So that particular order and that particular phase uh, is rescinded as of Friday and replaced by this, this order we've been talking about. And uh, just in terms of mass gatherings, we've already talked about, but mass gathering definition is uh, instances in which individuals are in one location and are unable to maintain a six-foot distance between individuals, not including individuals who reside together with only infrequent or incident incidental moments of closer proximity. So that's the definition of mass gatherings according to Governor Kelly and her executive order. Guidance for individuals. Individuals are strongly encouraged to follow guidance attached to this order. It's a short one pager and I'll highlight the uh, points in that guidance in a, in a couple of seconds. And then guidance for employers and businesses. Employers and businesses are strongly encouraged uh, to follow the guidance attached to this order, and uh, I'm just going to review the major points in that uh, guidance right now. Re regarding individuals, um, the guidance is individuals are strongly encouraged to wear cloth masks in public settings as appropriate, and especially when using mass transit. Employees should follow industry-specific guidance on mask use in workplaces. 
when in public, for example, parks, outdoor recreation areas, shopping areas, all individuals, not including individuals who reside together, should maintain a six foot distance from others with only infrequent or incidental moments of closer proximity. Avoid socializing in, in person with groups of more than 15 individuals in both indoor and outdoor settings, especially in circumstances that do not allow for a physical distance of six feet or more between individuals or groups with only infrequent or incident, incidental moments of closer proximity. And they gave some examples, for example, at receptions or trade shows. All high risk or vulnerable individuals should continue to stay home except for essential needs. And finally, the last guidance for individuals, minimize or eliminate non-essential travel and adhere to CDC and KDHE guidelines regarding isolation or quarantine following travel to high risk areas. Essential travel includes travel for urgent family, medical and business related needs as determined by the individual or business. I'll just go over a couple of the, there's about, looks like there's about six points under guidance for employers and businesses. I'll just go over a few of them. Continue to strongly encourage telework for all employees when possible. Gradually phase in employees on site as possible while maintaining six feet between employee workstations. All employees exhibiting symptoms should be required to stay at home and asked to call their health care provider. Strongly consider special accommodations for personnel who are members of a vulnerable population. So I've highlighted some of the highlight, highlights or aspects of the executive order number 20-34 from Governor Kelly. And um, I know that we've probably posted on our uh, city website the link uh, for that newest executive order under the COVID-19 related uh, web page and, and URL, so if you're interested in reading the entire order, I urge you to uh, go to the, the city's website and look for the COVID-19 information. City services. The city is in the first week of standard hours and days at the Recycle Center and the Brush Site. The Wagging Tails Dog Park is open and the Riverfront Campground is open on a limited basis for those campers that have self contain plumbing, including their own bathroom facilities. As we announced during this town hall last week, Woolman Park Aquatic Center will not open on May 25th, which would mark the traditional Memorial Day opening for the city pool. No decision has been made to close the pool for the entire summer, and staff will continue to monitor public health and public safety considerations to determine if the pool will be able to open later this summer. Trends throughout the Kansas City area in cities such as Tonganoxie, Bonner Springs, Roland Park, Prairie Village, and Atchison, to name a few, uh, that trend has been the total closure of the pools. They've made the decision to close the pools already for the entire summer. Uh, but we do not need to make that decision at this time. Um, we, will, uh, we continue to evaluate the situation and uh, we'll make a decision uh, sometime in the, in the not too distant future if not in May, sometime in, in June. Any further openings of city facilities or city buildings are on hold at this time. I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Kramer just to cover a few notes from his standpoint of, as the city manager. Thank you, Mayor Griswold. Um, we just learned yesterday afternoon of the governor's executive order to go to phase two. Um, staff has been working this morning on sort of the plan to look at a reopen date for facilities like animal control and city hall. Um, we're working toward that. We've been working internally on some measures to keep both our employees and our visitors safe. So we can expect some information on that soon. But again, with the executive order just coming down yesterday, we're still working on those plans to open those facilities. Um, a couple of things I can announce uh, through our meetings this morning after the governor's announcement is we will start issuing uh, garage sale permits starting Tuesday, May 26th, with the governor's transition to phase two, um, we believe that, that we can accommodate those requests, um, and then people can just use their judgment on whether they want to hold garage sales right now or they want to attend garage sales right now, but we will start issuing those permits on May 26th. Um, we are extending 
uh, I'll give a little bit of, of context on this. The city made a change in our burn, administrative burn regulations. Following best practices throughout the metro, um, we designated two times during the year, one in the spring, one in the fall, in which you could get a permit from the fire department to burn some of your brush. Um, there are stipulations related to those, but the first um, period ended May 15th. And with uh, the COVID issues um, and a lot of the changes that we made, I think a lot of people missed the first time around this first spring burn cycle. So we have made a decision to extend that. We're going to extend that to essentially a month from today, so to June 21st. So if you missed that uh, burn per period for the permit for the spring season, please contact the fire department, and they will come out, and they will look at your site, and they will either issue a permit if they believe that you're within the regulations or not. Um, so we will extend that. We'll put that on, on the website. Um, uh, and that was a decision that was made early in the year, and it was publicized. But again, with all the COVID issues, we realized that a lot of that information kind of got lost um, with everything that was happening. So we, we want to try to work with our residents um, to continue to do that in a safe manner. But we understand uh, that sometimes um, other things happen. So we're going to extend that to June 21st. If you have any questions, you can call City Hall or call the fire department. Um, a couple other uh, notes uh, related to the cities. Uh, trash bags, I know that's been uh, a big issue. We're getting closer. We've announced, I think, each week at this town hall that the trash bags will be delivered by the Lions Club in two phases, uh, May 30th and June 6th. Uh, we will put those on the website about which, uh, which residents will receive theirs on the 30th and which residents will receive theirs on the 6th uh, based on sections of the city. So that information will be forthcoming. And then once uh, City Hall reopens, we'll announce uh, that date, and then we'll be able to purchase uh, individual rolls of trash bags if you so desire. Uh, the city continues to have job openings. Um, uh, I'll make the pitch that the city is a good place to work. We're competitive. We have um, all types of different positions, career advancement opportunities. So uh, we have uh, always have openings in um, many of our departments, police and fire, but then also a lot of uh, our public works parks departments, um, and other opportunities in the city. So I continue to ask you to go to the city webpage if you're interested uh, in looking for city employment. Uh, so that's all the questions I have now. I know we continue to get the question about the pool. Um, we're getting close to having to make that decision. Uh, the trends do seem to be toward, I think Tonganoxie made their decision on Monday night, I believe, to close for the year. Um, so we're going to continue to look at that and make that decision um, hopefully pretty soon. I have a question about the playground equipment in our mm -hmm. parks. What, what's the what's our policy at um, this point? The playground equipment signs will be coming down on Friday. With the um, we've seen, as you all have, uh, probably um, the compliance going down a little bit. I think uh, some of the swing sets that I've seen, um, we've tried to continue to monitor that. Uh, our residents did a very good job for quite a while, but over the last week or so, we've noticed that, that uh, some of our signs have disappeared and, and such. We believe as we go into phase two, um, that requirement, that official requirement will be gone, so any remaining signs will remove. And please just use your best judgment on, on what you think is appropriate, but as of Friday of phase two, officially, Thank those uh, equipment will be open. Thank you. Yep. Um, so what I'm going to do is just... Uh, Transition uh, to give an update on the statistics with respect to the fight and the campaign against the spread of uh, COVID-19 at the state level and then at the, uh, the, the county level. And um, so as of, um, and these state statistics are updated uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So the, the ones that I pulled down uh, are as of Monday, the 18th of May. The number of cases, uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19, uh, 8,340. And I, by way of comparison, uh, last week, uh, the, the number was 7,116. So uh, well over 1,000 new cases identified and documented within the state. Hospitalizations as of uh, Monday uh, within the state, 740. That's up from 660 a week ago. Statewide deaths, uh, as of Monday, 173. That's up from 158 a week ago. And by the way, the 173 out of um, 8,340 uh, confirmed cases, that's a 
2.1% death rate, um, which is not acceptable, but, but is a lot better than what's happening nationally where that death rate is anywhere between, uh, you know, 5 and 6% and probably closer to 6% 6 at this particular point in time. Um, now, the Leavenworth County has the fourth highest total of COVID-19 cases in the state, 1,051, but as we know, that includes the cases at uh, Lansing Correctional Facility, the Grossman Center, and the actual, you know, actual county residents outside, you know, uh, you know, is much, much less. Most of those cases are from the from the inmates, unfortunately, uh, and also unfortunately, employees of the Leavenworth Correctional Facility, which is the state-run prison in Lansing and the Grossman Center. So, I mean, all the sp the specifics are are on the uh, Kansas Department of Health and Environment website if you want to drill down a little bit. So the uh, total uh, case rate for the state per 1,000 people, this is the per capita um, test rate is for, and that's for every 1,000 people in the state is 2.86%, which is up from 2.44% last week. And of course, that, that's a good thing in terms of means that testing is increasing, which uh, is important. And that's a statistic and a trend that's going in the right direction in my judgment. Leavenworth uh, total case rate uh, as far as uh, per 1,000 people is, uh, well, I guess what I was talking about the case rate, I believe that is related to testing, and, and I'll talk about the testing statistics in a minute. But the Leavenworth case rate uh, as of yesterday is 12.9%, and that's up from 11.5%. And I believe that's probably due to the uh, increase in, in the availability and the administration of tests, but I got a little ahead of myself there. And that we are fourth highest in the state in terms of the, uh, the, case, the, the total uh, case rate um, per 1,000 people because of the large numbers, as I talked about, at Lansing Correctional Facility and recently at the Grossman Center. Uh, talking about uh, still uh, in terms of the number of cases, males make up about uh, almost 56 percent, females almost 42 percent, and there's about 2.5 uh, percent of uh, people who have people who have contracted the virus who uh, it hasn't been reported whether they're male or female. Um, once again, people between the ages of 35 and 44, there's uh, almost 1,600 cases representing 19% of the total. This is statewide now. Be for people 25 to 34 years, uh, a, l a, little num a little bit higher than the uh, number of cases for 35 to 44, but the same 19% of the total number of cases within Kansas. And then the next highest uh, age group is 45 through 54, uh, about uh, 1,510 cases, and that represents a little over 18%. The average age is 43 for people who have contracted the virus, and the, uh, the range of ages is uh, zero, a baby, to 100 years old. And in terms of deaths, the 173 that I reported, the median age is 82, the youngest person is 36, and the oldest is 99. Um, and then, you know, it, age does make a difference in terms of, um, you know, the, the uh, comorbidities that are associated with age, diabetes, uh, heart disease, um, other, other types of ailments that, you know, if, as you get older, you, you may have a tendency to um, have those comorbidities. For 85 years or older uh, of the 173 deaths, 68 people have died in that particular age category, which, which represents 46 percent. In the 75 to 84 years old range, 39 people have unfortunately passed away. That represents 23.5 percent. And then the third highest is 65 to 74 years of age. 30 people have unfortunately passed away, and that represents almost 16% uh, of the total number of deaths. Uh, this is where I had gotten ahead of myself before in terms of people tested. Um, the number of people tested as of Monday was uh, almost 67,000 67, within the state, and the number who had tested positive was um, 
12.5%, and the testing rate per 1,000 people was almost 23%. Uh, and that compared uh, last week, the testing is going up. Last week, the number of people tested was about 54,000, so it went up by almost 13,000, which is good. And the uh, percent positive uh, came down from last week, it was a little over 13%, came down this, uh, this week, Monday, to 12.5%. And the um, testing rate, which I think is the important thing, the testing has increased. Last week it was, per 1,000 people, about 19%. This week it's at 23%. So the number of tests and the testing rate per 1,000, the per capita testing rate, has increased uh, quite a bit since last week. And um, the Leavenworth uh, County testing rate is, uh, for this week, as of reported as of Monday by the state, was 52.7%. Um, last week it was at 45, or almost 46%, so once again, an increase in the testing rate, once again, indicating the in increase in the amount of testing that's being done within the county. And then just very quickly, uh, as of yesterday, uh, looking at the COVID-19 website at the, that is uh, displayed by the county and the public health office, um, we're looking at the confirmed positive cases via testing is 1,053. And um, as I mentioned, about 174 of those are what are considered community cases. 67 are, are out of the Grossman Center, and then eight, 812 of those are Leavenworth Correctional Facility inmates. So the great majority of those confirmed positive uh, people contracting COVID-19 are uh, in those two facilities, Leven the Lansing Correctional Facility and the Grossman Center. Looking, looking at the day-by-day -day, uh, number of case, additional cases confirmed positive within the county overall over the last uh, four or five days, um, it looked like 0, 2, 1, 1, which is still low, although the previous week the numbers had been like 1, 0, 1, 0, so a little bit of an increase, not too bad, but it's really important to keep those number of day-by-day -day cases uh, within the county um, down at the lowest level if possible if not zero there is a little bit of an increase over the last four or five days but not but not too bad they're remaining pretty low in terms of the day-by-day -day, uh, trend as far as new positive cases confirmed by tests so um, and then there are seven deaths I saw in the Leavenworth Times yesterday evening that there was one more inmate at the Leavenworth Correctional Facility who had passed away. So there's four out of those seven deaths are Le uh, Lansing Correctional Facility inmates, and three are uh, members of our community within the uh, county uh, of Leavenworth. So that's the update as far as statistics at the state and uh, county, and obviously the city being part of the county. And they have a nice map there in terms of the distribution of where the various cases are, and I'd urge you to go in there and look at that case map. It's a nice tool that the uh, Leavenworth uh, County Public Health Office has on their website. Um, any, any questions from the audience? Uh, we did have two. Okay. I, think, I think you partially answered one. We had a question about um, uh, outdoor fitness with proper, proper social distancing. I think, uh, Mary, you read the guidance for individuals and employers on the executive order, and um, I think the when in public, outdoor recreation mm -hmm. areas, shopping areas, all individuals should maintain the six foot distance, item B, and then item C, yep. avoid socializing in groups of 15 individuals, both right. indoor and outdoor settings, that probably covers that item. Yeah, and it said, it said should order. maintain a six foot distance from others with only infrequent or inc incidental moments of closer proximity. Yep, good point okay. um, to make. And then we had a question about forming arts center. Um, I have a little bit of news on the Performing Arts Center. We have uh, been in contact with them today and after phase two, which goes into effect Friday, we're going to allow just limited numbers of the Performing Arts of the River City community players in there to do some work on the stage or some of their sets and stuff. As far as their musical, which I believe is in August, 
Um, we, we haven't made any kind of determination about that. I know theaters can open, um, but this is a city facility, so uh, the city will control how that goes, whether we do some sort of modified seating, or we'll get really into that over the next couple months, but um, we're going to allow them to start getting back in there with social distancing, with groups of smaller than 15, um, because I know uh, there's a lot of work to do, and, and that group does a lot of really good work. So more to come on the Performing Arts Center and any future shows. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me just quickly talk about, I uh, corresponded yesterday with Ms. Wendy Scheidt, who's the director of Leavenworth Main Street, and just asked her if she'd had kind of any informal feedback from um, the downtown business owners in terms of how they may have made out with respect to the Paycheck Protection Program. There, remember, there were two, two iterations of that uh, initially when the, CARE, the first CARES Act, which was the third major relief bill, uh, passed by the Congress and signed by President Trump came out. There was a certain amount of money. They ran out of that money. Small Business Administration ran out of that money pretty quickly. And then there, uh, about two weeks ago, there was a second uh, CARES Act, um, another major bill that provided additional funding for businesses that wanted to take advantage of the uh, Paycheck Protection Program and also the uh, the emergency injury disaster loans, which have been available uh, from the Small Business Administration. That program's been out there for, I think, at least 25 years. Um, but I did get a quick update from Ms. Scheidt, and um, she said that when she did a quick informal survey of her downtown merchants yesterday, she said during that first round of the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, uh, and there were 25 um, merchants, 25 business owners that replied. Uh, nine of them, nine merchants plus Leavenworth Main Street and the CASA organization applied for the Paycheck Protection Program loans. Um, and then that was during the first round. So that gives you kind of an indication, at least in terms of the 25 respondents, that uh, a good number of them, I, I would say a significant percentage, did apply for that uh, first round of uh, Paycheck Protection Program loans. Uh, none of those who responded to her um, on yesterday applied for the second round of Paycheck Protection Program loans, but that was just, you know, those 25 respondents out of those 25 respondents, none had applied. I guess, um, obviously, they had been able to work with their bankers and get that loan during that, uh, that first application period. And then uh, those merchants who applied for the Idle, which I mentioned is the emergency industry disaster loan. Hire, which was, I believe that was a state uh, program, a state grant program that focused in on the hospitality, uh, restaurant, entertainment industry, um, or other types of loans or grants. She said that nine did receive um, money, did receive a loan from the Idle program, and that's administered by the Small Business Administration. Se out of those nine, seven received funding, two are still waiting, and one is frustrated at the process. So that's not good, but that was kind of the, the, uh, the outcome of what she, she heard about those, the idle, the hire, and other types of loans and or grants. And four that applied for that hire program uh, did, did receive funding. I know that that particular uh, that particular program ran out of money pretty quickly, if I remember correctly, because it was very early on and um, probably late, uh, if not mid-March, late March. So it was one of the first uh, programs available. And then um, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, PUA, three businesses applied, downtown businesses applied on behalf of each of their three employees. So um, that probably hasn't, I mean, for individuals, uh, and I know that, uh, Representative uh, Pittman has put out information that I've seen about that pandemic un unemployment assistance, and I'm not, not an expert in that, but uh, that, that information is available uh, in terms of that particular program and then just the whole unemployment, applying for the unemployment, what you get normally from the state, and then the, one of those bills that the Congress passed, uh, of course, kicked in an additional, I think, $600 per month. So if you have questions about that, um, Go on the Leavenworth Main Street website or the Leavenworth County Development uh, Corporation website or get in touch with your uh, uh, state or U.S. representatives. But um, I think probably people, if they've had questions, have asked questions. And 
I know there's been some slowdown at the state in terms of the information technology being a little antiquated, but I'm, I'm hoping maybe that's gotten uh, resolved, but uh, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, you, know, you gotta hang in there, and if it's really frustrating, you gotta get a hold of somebody if you are eligible to receive that, those unemployment uh, assistance benefits. And several of the uh, downtown merchants uh, told Ms. Scheidt that they're reluctant to spend funds, uh, to, some are reluctant to spend funds received via these loans in case they aren't forgiven. Um, I will say that the Small, Small Business Administration, I think late last week, came out with uh, the initial guidance as far as what needs to be done as far as these loans being forgiven. And I will just say that there's a lot of work that they need to do because it's too complicated. I mean, I, I took a look at the, 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 uh, the article, an article that was written about, it was put, not put on the Forbes uh, website and it was by a gentleman named Anthony Nitty and it call, it's titled uh, Small Business Administration Releases Paycheck Protection Program Loan Forgiveness Application, A Deep Dive. Well, it was a deep dive. It's pretty complicated. Um, I hope that uh, over the course of the next uh, month to six weeks, well, I guess it would be a month, yeah, to six weeks, that, the, um, that this process can be simplified because it, right now it is pretty complicated. What I would urge small businesses to do, and I would do everything you can to strive for forgiveness, is to work with your bankers uh, they can help decipher, you know, what's come out, and hopefully it'll it'll get a little simpler. Because right now, uh, I don't want to scare people, but it's pretty it's pretty detailed, and I think it can be it can be better, and it can be a little bit more straightforward. But it's going to be hard, I think, for individual business owners to sort through that. But I definitely think that um, that it's worth asking for forgiveness, understanding what the criteria is, and then the forms have to be filled out. But um, you're going to need, I think most business owners are going to need the help of their bankers and or accountants. I know that all small business owners don't have accountants, but uh, it's just something that if you can get more up to speed, ask various questions, I think I'm going to send a little, little email to my U.S. congressman, uh, Congressman Wat Watkins, and just tell him uh, this is just, I think, just a little too complicated and needs to be, uh, could be, should be simplified a little bit, but there's still time for the Small Business Administration to do that uh, with the, uh, with, you know, based on the guidance from the Congress and the intent of the, uh, the bill that was passed for this particular program. So uh, there's time, but um, I just provide that for you for your information. And then uh, Sergeant Major Jones had mentioned uh, that there wasn't going to be a public ceremony at the Leavenworth National, Le Fort Leavenworth National Cemetery on Memorial Day. That's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. It'll be a very private uh, ceremony with a minimal number of people. I would like to say that the Memorial Day ceremony at the Leavenworth National Cemetery will take place, but once again, it's, it's not for the public as it has been in all the previous years and decades. It'll be a very small, um, 10 people or less, I've been asked as the mayor to go ahead and uh, give a, you know, a short speech, which I'm very honored and, and privileged to do. Uh, it begins at uh, 9 a.m. on Monday, Memorial Day, and um, the city, as it did last year, will, will lay a wreath at the memorial, at the amphitheater, uh, in honor of our country's uh, war dead. Any other questions, Mr. Kramer? Uh, we had a non-COVID related question okay. on the timeline on the Eisenhower Road project. Okay. I'm assuming, and I believe it's the question related to the project at DeSoto Road. Um, that is a Lansing project, but we do have good communication with them. And the date that we have right now is early fall. So that, that's when that project should be done. Uh, if you look toward the intersection and fourth and um, Eisenhower, there's some uh, work being done there to aid in the quick trip. Uh, opening some lane closures that should be done here in the next 30 to 60 days and then again that intersection will be reconstructed uh, in 2021 and then farther down Eisenhower mm -hmm. uh, west of about 13th yep. Street or the storage box mm -hmm. um, all the way out to County Road 5 that that uh, road widening project go to four lanes at a mm -hmm. sidewalk on each side and street lights that's scheduled by the county to be put out to bid in September so that'll yep. be uh, also a 2021 project so a lot of projects on Eisenhower. Yep. 
And just one question about Stubby Park, because we've mm -hmm. been working on that park, uh, the upgrade of that park for a while. Do you have an anticipated uh, date for when it would be completed? Uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, I think the equipment's in. Okay. So the, there's some um, okay. more site work and some concrete work and some fencing to go in, but okay. it's moving along quickly. Okay, good. Um, so let me just uh, wrap up and uh, thank uh, everyone for tuning in today to our Facebook Live Town Hall. Just uh, we're gonna go. This will. We're gonna go to two every two weeks. I think that's where we'll probably be best at this point. So we won't have one next week anyway. It's a short week anyway with the Memorial Day holiday. So two weeks from today will be the next Mayor's Facebook Live Town Hall. And uh, as I've done previously. Um, I will just remind people that the commission, the city commission, the mayor, the city commission, the, the city manager and his staff, I uh, mean, our overriding priority, our mission of, the, of those entities, your city government, is to do our very best to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of all Leavenworth citizens. In focusing on this priority, we have been sharing pertinent and accurate information relating to COVID-19, the adjustment and the adaptation of the delivery of city services to account for the social distancing requirements stipulated by the county health department. And we advocate as much as possible or go to bat for our small businesses in conjunction with our partner organizations, the Leavenworth Main Street, Leavenworth County Development Corporation and, and others. And um, you know, we're, our hearts and prayers go out to every, everybody who's been affected by the COVID-19 virus, both from a health standpoint and an economic standpoint. Uh, our businesses across the nation, within our state, regionally, within, within our city, county and city, are taking the brunt of necessary state and local government actions to pre prevent the spread of COVID-19. But fortunately, we're getting, we're in, we're now making some progress with respect to the reopening phase. And uh, it'll go, I think it'll go fine if people, I call it the trifecta of what everyone needs to do um, and for, to, to ensure that you know, this doesn't get worse and, you know, continues to abate. And that's the um, wearing a mask. It's not mandatory, but I strongly encourage all our citizens when they're out in public um, to do that. Um, and um, that's also encouraged and uh, suggested, strongly suggested by the CDC. Of course, the washing of hands frequently is really, really important. That's one leg of that trifecta that I talked about. Uh, and or using, you know, the uh, hand sanitizer as much as possible. Uh, and then the, um, the third thing is the social distancing, which really does make a difference. You know, no more handshaking and uh, trying to maintain that, not trying to maintain at all times that six feet of distance. Those three things, if we do that, uh, will be very, very critical to getting the statistics and the trends to remain on the downward slope and to hopefully prevent any type of recurrence of the COVID-19 virus uh, within our community, within the state, or in, and within our nation. Uh, so once again, our thoughts and prayers go out to the county citizens who have contacted the virus and, of course, their family members and, and those who have unfortunately passed away, and to all members of the healthcare profession, doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, nurses' aides, EMTs, um, firefighters, our first responders, our police officers. Uh, remember what these professionals are doing for us and telling, telling us, and I think they would reinforce, I know they would reinforce what I just mentioned in terms of the, those three actions, in terms of best practices that we should be able to do as uh, citizens to do our part um, in, in uh, beating this COVID-19 uh, virus. And so that's about it. Hope everyone has a, a good rest of their week. And um, we will see everybody in two weeks from today at our next Facebook Live Town Hall. Thank you.